time, I will call to order the Board of Education's regular meeting. We will stand and be led in the pledge by Mrs. McAfee. Academic field, 
um, is used in engineering, information, biological, and a variety of STEM programs. The theories and methods used <coughs> for science include mathematics, physics, theories from computer science, and so on. Now, here at NFA, we now have a program called Net Sci-Fi. Exactly what is Net Sci-Fi? It is basically network science research for high school students. And this project consists of a team of researchers from West Point. West Point has a network science center. This team will guide eight of NFA students, broken into two teams, for this year-long research project. <coughs> the students will identify a topic, gather data, analyze data, and finally present their findings at a posted session in Boston this coming spring. This past August, students from NFA gathered in Boston at the kickoff workshop. It was really great. It was really special. Um, at this particular workshop, the kids were introduced to the field of network science because no one had any idea what this was all about, um, this new science. And um, they was not only introduced to network science, but also to the tools they would need carry out such a project for the remainder of the year, the academic year. This is a picture, basically, of Nico Paxline, showing some of the students at NFA trying. I don't think she ever left home before, but um, we get ready for the, the workshop in Boston. At Boston, at BU, we basically was at this particular building most of the time, the science and engineering facility. The first session basically included our students, along with students from other institutions that are associated with it. We have kids from Boston University High School. I know you realize there's a high school that you could sell. Um, Binghamton and a few other schools. The first meeting basically they sat around and introduced themselves. They would introduce this gentleman here in the corner, Paul, is a, a guy at he was um, in charge, actually he was in charge of the whole program. So he led the session. <coughs> and it was really good. After that, the kids were basically introduced to network data. They struggled, it was very interesting, watching them, learning this new form of science, and um, discussing it and working in groups. They worked around conference <coughs> tables, they brainstormed ideas, they illustrated these ideas. Um, and I'm trying to see, we have a few kids here from N NFA group in here. And um, they picked up really quickly. There are some others on the board learning about. I think this particular project um, was social network. Another thing they did at the CU, they had to learn computer science really interesting because it's very difficult to learn computer science in two or three hours. The language they learned, or was introduced to at least, is Python. Okay? Um, here, and these illustrations are showing you basically NFA students at the computer, with the instructor, and so on. These small pictures about students, hard at work. And another project they did at the workshop was basically you did bodies and some tools to illustrate network in the field itself. They're outside the building, putting it together, using the language, using some of the theories behind network science. And this is the end project. There's another um, illustration of a particular data they present to, and they use their bodies to illustrate it. At the end of the week, students presented. I was really impressed with our students because this is some really difficult stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot. And um, the tools that you need to analyze the <coughs> data is, is quite a thing. These kids was very energetic. They did not whine, you know, they wasn't upset about being introduced to such a difficult task and learning things in such a short period of time. They, they were really impressed. I was really very proud of them. This is one of the teams in NFA their presentation. And I'm going to let um, Ms. Chu speak to you about some of the images that you see. What I would like to 
to touch on, if I may, is um, the reason why the Network Science Center wanted to get involved in this project is right now Network Science, I compare it to computer science 30 years ago. It's a new science, a new field that's primarily at a college level. When we look at it, we see STEM. We see it as the perfect tool to engage students. Think of social networks, all the social media that students use today. Facebook, Twitter, think about the music network, Spotify. All of those are highly engaging to these students. So our thought is let's use those tools to teach them math. Network science is matrix algebra, it's systems of equations, um, it's technology, teaching them new programming languages like Python. So it's teaching them a lot of different tools. It's engineering. We're looking at networks found in nature, and we're looking at properties of those networks, like uh, efficiency within the network. And then we're engineering our own network, like the World Wide Web. So we're, we're studying those properties. And students, we found, are so engaged that they really want to learn it. It's very difficult, like Ms. Dunham said. There are a lot of concepts, but it seems that natural fit. In one week, these students were introduced to a new language. None of them knew how to computer program. And yet, they were able to begin to form certain kinds of ring networks, like over on the side. And if you look at the pictures on the left, they were able to even start to find out what happens when you remove one node, or what happens um, when different um, things spread through a network, like disease, biological networks, or rumors in social networks. So network science affects um, a lot of different fields biology, economics, um, computer science and the internet, physics. Um, it's truly not multidisciplinary, but interdisciplinary. And um, really, the next generation of education needs to be interdisciplinary. We, if we're going to solve these complex problems, we need to start teaching our students to come at it from all different angles, not from just a biological point of view or biochemistry, but truly adding different perspectives to solve these problems. So this is a three-year program that uh, is funded by an NSF grant. Uh, we are hoping to keep NFA involved in the program for all three years. Um, this year we have the two teams. Possibly in the future we might pull more um, students if we can get more teachers involved, more teachers. Um, but that's our goal, that's our vision. We're hoping to really apply what is now considered a college level pursuit and bring it down, just like computer science, to a high school level, see what they can do. Because I, I predict that the high school students with that engagement factor will take it and really surprise all of us. So. If, if you have any more questions, please feel free to contact me. I was introduced to that with science this August, past August, it's totally new to me. And um, I'm excited. It is fascinating stuff. It is so fascinating. And here's um, Judy Cooper, she's another high school teacher. <coughs> she and I are, you know, we're involved in the um, <coughs> venturing students, trying to keep them on, on task. But without Lori, it's not happening because she's the brain behind it all. Um, next, I have two more short presentations, and this is basically the wrong one I had a black park forest. And I'm going to have um, Jack Caldwell, because without Jack, I would be lost in the forest. Okay. First thing. At the end of all of the presentations, then I'll see if any of the board members have any questions for any of the presentations that you do tonight. Trout program. Why book trout? I'm, I'm quite sure you guys have heard of um, book trout. 
last few years with Blackwater Forest. I just want to give you a brief background. It's native to the eastern part of the United States. It's a freshwater fish. It's fly only in cold water. It's an indicator. It's the type of fish that indicates the health of our watershed. Um, strong population of brook trout is usually indicative of excellent water quality. Declining our brook trout population is no good because it's usually letting us know that our aquatic system is in trouble. Okay. Here's a map of New York. Red means bad, no brook trout. Here's the Hudson River going up. And as you can see, we're not in good shape. Our water is really not in good shape at all. Back in 05, you had a group of public and private entities who came together and formed the Eastern Brook Trout Joint Venture. And they wanted to put a halt to this decline in this fish. Um, here in the Hudson Valley, at least in New York, one of the reasons, well, several reasons why we had to Decline and this decline we've been seeing over several decades. We've lost the habitat, habitat fragmentation, development, urban as well as agricultural development, and also competition of trout that are non native to this area. All of these three factors cause a, a, a dip in our brook trout population. Now, this decline was picked up by or well, the interest of it was picked up by Black Rock Forest. <clears throat> and so they came out with this program called the Brook Trout Release Program. And this program basically um, involved um, receiving fertilized eggs from a hatchery out in Long Island. Uh, one of the directors at Brook Trout was going to go and receive these eggs. Give that some amount of age to various schools who are associated with the program. And within the school, the eggs are hatched and the students are responsible to care for the little trap to a certain stage of development and then release it the Okay? Another factor is that the students, I mean, Black Rock Forest is also involved in graduate and undergraduate research programs. And these usually colleges down in the city, Cornell, Few of them. We have students that are um, looking at the habitat requirement for both trout. Now, NFA and the World Trout Program. At NFA, I teach a course that's tied with field biology. It's an elective science course. Um, this year I have five sections of field biology. I usually sign up, this is my third year into this, 25 students. It's volunteer students from the, my field biology class who volunteer the extra credit, basically. And they will be responsible for caring for the trout until the time comes for its release. Um, and back into the forest. There's three trips involved. This is some illustration showing some of my students last year in the class caring for the fish tank. And the fish tank is not your ordinary tank. We have a refrigeration unit down here. Very, very close, like 50 degrees in that water. But so they body very cold. Um, here, students are taking measurements. This is a probe, dissolved oxygen probe. And um, the length, as time goes on, they record a lot of data. The data is written on the board, but it's also put into Excel spreadsheets later on for us to create graphs. Another aspect of the child program that Jack was responsible for was to look at the macroinvertebrates in the water at um, Black Rock Forest because macroinvertebrates are the food source for our poor child. We wanted to look at them and to see what type is there and the amount. So basically, we got involved in the leak pack. I'm sorry, part of it was covered. Here are students preparing the leak pack, placing them in the water. It basically involves selection of leaves. Um, oak, maples, etc., cetera, um, and placed in various locations in the water, tying them down, and don't uh, use using a rock or something like that, or a tree. The packs are kept in for a month, a month or longer. After a month or longer, let me see, now this, this slide here is showing that um, when 
when the leaf packs are placed in the water, the students usually analyze the quality of the water. So here, this young lady is taking the pH, and and I'm not sure what she's doing. I think she's just doing the pH. Variety. A lot of illustration, a lot of GPS and tools to make sure we know exactly where they're placed. And so we can find them when we go back to the month. Um, here's students at the end of that particular trip. They just you know, get ready to pack up. Students really enjoy this program too at the high school. Many of them have uh, say to me they haven't been out of the classroom since grade school. So the high school students don't get a chance to go out much. They love this. The second part of the program, this is like two years ago, we retrieved the book trout. So here you see the kids a bucket, they go into the water, they have to find it, they have to bring it back to the lab. In the lab, they wash off the leaves and they start to analyze it. And you see, the reason why we use leaves, because so this is what macroinvertebrates eat. Macroinvertebrates eat leaves and book trout eat the macroinvertebrates. So the, the science behind this is, you can tell the quality of the water by looking at the macroinvertebrates that have in different bodies of water. It's a bio-index factor we use. Here is some um, um, students analyzing what they found, and they place them on the tray, and they just start to separate them, they count them, and they figure out um, the quality of what is the formula that they use. And this is some of the stuff that they get to the tree. Okay, here's the last day when they release the book trout into the water, the ones that um, we brought back to the forest from the fish tank in the class. And at the end, we usually treat them with a little cookout. And they actually, I can't believe how many kids have never experienced something this simple you know, in the city of New York. They love it. Okay. And now, I'm going to thank you, Jack and Katie. And the last thing, Jack, would you like to say anything about this little track program? It's uh, different than the network program. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Questions for Ms. Dunham, Mrs. Cooper, or Mr. Caldwell from the board? Yes, Mrs. McAfee. How are the children selected? Um, or, they, uh, or is it different? Uh, yeah. Are they different programs? The network science. First of all, they came here really late. They, you know, most of the kids might have been in Boston and that started right now. Because if this is the new type of science, then obviously we want as many of our kids to at least be exposed to it as possible. It's, it's difficult. There's a lot involved. You know, right, I got a headache just looking at you. Oh, no. You went to Boston. I was like, whoa. And um, I have to, I just signed up. Um, last I start this week. Computer science course, the language is Python. MIT open course online, so I have to take this course in order to help these students. I have to educate myself. It's a lot. It's, it's very good to really start sitting on seminars and I get this going. My students are some bright kids. I think it's very exciting. You know, it was interesting. They just had it. It's hard, you know, bringing them together weekly and glory sends them an email for the first time they have to read the email. My kids are not used to email, see? Facebook. They have to read the email. They have to find to come to them and have to uh, be prepared. And it's difficult. So many of those kids are taking like four or five AP courses simultaneously. So that's how they're selected for Tony explained. So now the book trial, and like I said, it was selected through me. So basically, 
registered in my clan, I will have to actually credit. And actually credit is being signed up for. And I usually check the first 25 kids. And that's, because I have such a large number of students, it's humanly impossible. I was impressed that there were so many girls who wanted to go out and handle the books. <laughs> I, I, would, I would not have done that. I just want you to know that. So this year we're taking up a lot because now we're bringing in a lot of analytical skills, a lot of data, and how do you interpret data? And how do you present your data, you know, not only with a line graph or a bar graph, but with lots of other types of graphs, the boxes, et cetera. So I want to take that to a higher level. Any other questions? Thank you. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Prokash. Do you foresee, uh, like we have 25 students involved in this field work, do you, can you foresee in the future of having a class of 25 that that's what they will be doing as an elective course that would be basically um, studying that black rock? So it would be almost like an outdoor science you know, type of elective that um, majority of their work would be at, at Black Rock? I love that. <laughs> well, let, me just, let me just add this because I think it's, it's, a, it's a new part of Black Rock that the, that the board may not be fully aware of. But about a year ago, uh, Black Rock, um, in, in a new strategic planning uh, effort, uh, hired a director of education. That's Jeff Kidder. And Jeff's not able to be here today. Jeff um, has put in place a number of projects that are only going to be growing larger. And they're interesting in their complexity, um, Veronica was saying that the summer course, which was a pilot program, only three of the, of the um, six or more classes that, that Jeff wants to put in place for the summertime uh, came into play. But those would be high school students coming in, and, and they'd be the students. But what he wants, as, as the assistants to the professors who are running the class, our high school teachers, so that the high school teacher is now doing like an in-service class, learning these new techniques, coming from the experts that are in, at Columbia University, Hunter College, uh, NYU, uh, and all those other schools. Th these are also members of Black Rock Forest, which really haven't gotten connected to the school-age kids yet. And this is this is that our effort now is let's make that link. We we've been missing that link for so many years. And let's make that link uh, a little tighter. And th this is one of those efforts. The the uh, the, the mammoth program is is, a, is really a big one. When the kids are out there, they're following a transect of over 200 meters and and laying down certain kinds of traps with certain bait inside, and then coming back very early in the morning to see what they what they catch. And then those get recorded on the GPS unit. And then that gets put back into the GIS system and all those other kinds of things. So they're, so they're in there digitally, and, and we'll be able to uh, feel that as a, as a virtual experience, too. So there's, there's a lot more going on in BlackRock and the educational programs than there's ever been before. And it's really growing. Yeah, the virtual labs are really good. This year, I'm going to use it as a pilot uh, program with water chemistry. We'll get a chance to go to Black Rock at different locations and sample the water techniques. It's really interesting. And not only will we introduce these different techniques, but taking the data, inputting it into the computer program, creating graphs, analyzing the graphs, and making predictions too. So it's a little more rigor involved, but that's the level, you know, at the high school level. It's kind of Any other questions? Thank you all very much.
The next item on our agenda this evening is public discussion and comment on agenda items. Anyone wishing to speak to agenda items, please step to the podium and give your name and address. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Are there any other questions or comments on agenda items? Okay. Being none, we'll move on to um, next agenda item, which is from myself, the board president. I have a resolution to approve the adoption of revised policies number 5200, comprehensive student attendance, and number 5441, eligibility for student athletic and extracurricular activity participation. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. Resolution A is to pursue approved facilities project change orders associated with approved projects. NFA North Boys Gym Renovation, Gams Renovation Project, Heritage Middle School Interior Bleachers, Team Divider Wall and Locker Room Alteration Project. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution B will be for Mr. Boles. Thank you, Mr. Miso. Before I, I ask you to approve the resolution for the facility request, we added two items to the agenda. I gave it to uh, the board clerk. I want to know if I can uh, include them in the next agenda. Can I have a motion to add two items <coughs> to the agenda? The uh, res on the resolution to approve facilities use request. So moved. Roll call, please. <coughs> Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokosh. Yes. Mr. Woodall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. The two items that we are in tonight, uh, one is for Quick Strike. They have scheduled two more games. Uh, one for the end of October, the other one at the beginning of November. We have all the paperwork and insurance on file. The next item is the Newburgh and Large City School District Department of Athletics would like to host a bowl game in November, I believe it's November 18, at Newburgh Free Academy. We received a letter from Mr. Chatham and the athletic director. They discussed this item with Mr. Piso. I met with them today. We have all the insurance information we put the cost to it, and they have agreed to the cost that we put in our spreadsheet, and I would like to get this for them tonight. So uh, with that said, we have 11 items for tonight approval from the Board of Education. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to ask them. I'm going to put them uh, by motion on the table, and then I'll ask for questions and comments. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Can I have um, a motion to approve the use of school district facilities? So moved. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokash. I have um, a couple questions. One, um, for any of these uh, facility use requests that extend beyond January 1st, we had uh, discussed, I thought, during the um, workshop that you either going to send a letter with them as to uh, maybe some fee changes at January 1st. That would be part of this? Yep. That'll um, have to go out. Once the board decides what the new fees are going to be, then the letter communicating that. Um, Mr. Velez, I believe, has spoken to people putting requests in that extended beyond the first of the year, explaining to them that probably there would be an increase 
in the cost moving forward, but we will need to have a formal letter sent out uh, making them aware that um, the fees are being charged from now until the 31st of December are one, and then whatever the board approves, the new fees will be implemented beginning January 1st of 2013. And that other question is on uh, number 10. Uh, is that possible uh, to, uh, there were some questions I had on that, maybe discuss in the second session? Sure. The attorney's telling me it's not executive session unless we're talking about people. Do we want to talk about people or do we want to ask questions um, in general? Or just about people? Yeah, if, like if we bring it into executive session, it has to be naming people, it has to be specific to personnel, <coughs> people. If it's just general questions, we can do that now. Okay, is, is that, all right. Because normally we, we have a, um, a waiting period, right? And this is not, within the, the, the realm of the, of the waiting period, Ms. Procos, the original request, uh, if you, you, I believe you have it in front of you, they requested uh, five different dates. The first two are out of that, that's called, one was for this Saturday, and the other one for October 18th. Oh, so they're out? The, those two are out, they're both oh, okay. out. Uh, the one that we are gonna go over is for October 28th and November 11th. Okay, and, and the fees have been paid up to date? On what they have used, yes, we are, we are uh, working and working with Mr. Piso at some of the fees for some of the games in the summertime, but everything has been paid up to that, yes. Including the ones in the summer? The summertime is one that is questionable. We're going to be working through that to get them. They want uh, the superintendent to look at a letter they sent me. I'm going to provide that to the superintendent tomorrow. I got the letter last Friday. Right, I thought it was discussed that we weren't, we weren't you know, going to give any use until fees were paid up to date. The issue with those fees in particular are that it wasn't a result of anything that they did, that they were not able to use um, approved dates and times for the field. So that's the issue with those particular portion of the fees. It was the districts, was something within the district and um, employees that were assigned to show up to uh, do things like turn on the lights and whatnot that didn't go. So it wasn't through their fault that they could not use the field. So they don't want to pay for something that they didn't use because of something that we didn't do. Also, so the, that portion of the bill is only 30 days behind. Yeah. So they have paid, up to, today I received a check for $850 from all the games, so monthly they've been paying. This one is for the last week of uh, August, so I, I told them that I would discuss it with the superintendent and get back to them. So uh, if they have to pay, they probably will pay, but right now I have to discuss it with the superintendent first. Okay. So they are 30 days behind in one particular invoice. Everything else, they're up to date. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Brokaw. Yes. Mr. Woodall. Yes. Ms. Kubczyk. Yes. Thank you. Re resolution C is to create a district Facebook account. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Levenstein. Well, I have, I have some reservations. I, I certainly am more for communication with parents and, and students and employees, and, and this can be a great tool for that. But my concern is about the procedures and organizations for the posting, uh, uh, postings on the Facebook page. And the reason is sometimes I feel there's, there is not equity within the district. I'm just concerned that this could be an issue with, with, with some people trying to post things or, or postings not being put on there. That's, that's my concern. That, that I would think that we should have a procedure <coughs> and, and, and 
authorizations for people to submit the survey for that. Marco, I don't know if you want to speak to that at all. I mean, certainly within the, the staff of the district, and this will be operated through the communications department. So certainly they will have procedures and protocols that have to be um, in place, you know, in regards to this um, use of a, a social network. And, you know, the primary, um, I'll go back to the, um, resolution itself, the, the primary purpose of this is a mechanism for communicating with the school community and being able to reach more students, parents, and other stakeholders. So this is a one-way, if you will, um, social media site. So I don't know, Margo, if you want to speak at all about... I, I'm sure, I know the district has had experience, for example, with web pages, which is not different because the individual teachers and others submit information to go on a web page and it's either accepted or not. If it's abused, if somebody submits something that's legitimate and there seems to be an inequity, I'm sure that's something that would be addressed with the administrator if that's handling you know, this issue. And we can look, about, look into specific policies and procedures, but it, it does have to comply with the acceptable use policy. Well, I understand that. Is only appropriate for it. Correct. I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about that there may be either schools, certain schools that are going to have a lot of things on it, or certain departments. And, and I just want it to be fair to everyone to get on there. That, that's my concern. I don't see anything except we're letting the communication department say that. Which is, they're doing a great job. They're doing, I think this is a whole different thing. And I, I, I'm looking for someone with authority, whether it be, if it's a building issue, let the principal submit that. If it's a, a grade issue, let a director uh, submit that. Uh, if it's a sports issue, let the athletic director submit it from the coaches or whatever, whatever is involved. That's, what, that's just my thing. Again, part of the, um, the resolution says that the superintendent or the designee shall be responsible for ensuring that the postings on the district Facebook and everything comply with the acceptable use policy. So if the superintendent or his designee is in charge of making sure that there's a fair and equitable distribution of postings, um, I think we leave that up to the staff. And then if uh, community members or other stakeholders or parents or students are coming to us or particular buildings are coming to us and saying, we don't think things are you know, being posted fairly, then, you know, our recourse certainly is to go to the superintendent who needs to speak with his staff about the procedures and the protocols around um, what's, you know, what's being put onto the Facebook page. Yes, Mr. Madam President, I was under the impression that it was going to be used for the purpose of disseminating information, so we were going to have a central administrator who was going to disseminate that information, so it wasn't going to be used for a back and forth type of situation, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes, Mr. Lawson. So um, the public will not be able to post. Correct. Then that's not social media. The social media is a, a conversation. So essentially, this is a it's a it's a base, basically another website. Just just for clarity's sake, I mean. The, the object of social media is to engage in conversations, to transmit information, and to communicate with the public uh, around central issues. So this website, I'm sorry, this Facebook page will be just a dissemination of information. Correct. And I believe it says that um, at the top of the resolution. As many Facebook pages are, Twitter accounts, that kind of stuff, there are one way Facebook pages. So for us, it is for the purpose of disseminating information because so much of our community and our stakeholders here in the district look to Facebook to get their information. So no, it's not interactive, but yes, it is a way to reach even more of our community. The other piece um, that we should consider, um, if we're not going to do two-way conversations, we should also consider maybe liking certain um, websites or other uh, spots on the web 
that would be uh, conducive to learning more about or communicating more to the, uh, the people in our district about what's going on out there. For example, there are websites that give just pure information, government websites that are considered or should be considered to be safe and, and that go through a certain protocol um, just like we do um, to make sure that there's no um, inappropriate comments being made or posts being made. So we should consider, maybe if we're not going to have communication back and forth, to consider liking certain pages that would inform our students and parents about different things that might impact them. Yeah, and so certainly we have some of that already on the district's uh, web page where we have links to, you know, other websites for information, but certainly we can look into that in regards to the Facebook page and, you know, liking certain things or, or setting that up. We can examine that. The one way uh, that we're using it is to enhance the website because some people don't have access to websites, but this Facebook seems to be everybody's on here somehow, some way. So we can reach more people, hopefully, with, with things that are going on in the district in a more timely fashion. We're not looking to debate with people on the back and forth about issues in the district. Maybe we'll graduate to that at some point. Hopefully it'll be after I'm gone. It's a, it's a, convers a conversation, not a debate. A conversation. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokosh. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Buchek. Yes. That ends this session, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Piso. No, you have one more thing, sorry. <laughs> no, that was, that was a game on November 18th. This is to televise the game on the 28th. Okay. Oh, is it still with Mr. Velez? The televised game? Evidently not, okay. IMD is a resolution to approve TWC to televise the football game September 28th. Uh, Let you. me add it to the agenda. <laughs> Can I have a motion to add resolution right. to the agenda? So move. Second. And then, and then Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? <coughs> Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Kuchek? Yes. All right, the resolution reads, be it resolved, that the Board of Education authorizes the Board President to execute an event production agreement with TWC News and Local program, Programming, LLC, for the photographing, recording, and filming of the NFA versus Middletown AA football game on Friday, September 28th. 2012 at NFA Athletic Field at no cost to the district. A copy of which agreement shall be incorporated by reference within the minutes of this meeting. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Yes, yes Mr. Woodall. Because there's a contract on this. So perhaps there wasn't a contract before, and that's why it wasn't done before. But this year they came with a contract, so we have to approve it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Woodall, our lives are becoming more complicated with each passing day. And this is just in the nick of time because the game is tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, we're out there. We might have to do it tonight to let everybody know. That, that is my court tonight. Thank you.
Are there any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? No. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Prokoff? Yes. Mr. Woodlaw? Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, next item is the recommendations from the committees on special education. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokosh. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Buchek. Yes. Next item uh, B is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Thomas Kelly Software Associates to purchase Easy SES Software Funding Source Title I Part A. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Yes, of course, Mr. Woodhall. We'll provide that information in the next update. update. Oh, you mean it now? Yeah. Oh, the top uh, of your head. What is software uh, that's used for the management of the easy uh, of the SES program? So it tracks all the students who have been authorized to um, receive SES services. Uh, it helps us uh, pay, helps the vendors bill for the services provided, and then to report at the end of the Program. Tom, SES Supplemental Educational Services. You have uh, vendors to provide the services to our students. We have two this year because we just. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Noriega. Our next item on the agenda is from the Executive Director of Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I would like to request um, two items be added to the agenda. Uh, the first one is in addition to item F, resolution to approve conference requests. I have a motion to add this item to the agenda. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. And the second is to add item G to the agenda. I have a motion to add item G to the agenda. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Walton? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. So the first resolution um, is Resolution A. Resolution to authorize superintendent of schools to execute agreements with the Boys and Girls Club of Newburgh and to provide activities and services to students in after-school programs at GAMS and NFA North. And the funding source is 2012-13 Extended Day Violence Prevention Grants. Can I have a motion? So moved. Okay. Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Lawson. I'd like to have a description of this program. See exactly what days does this operate and how many um, students does it usually take care of? Dr. Shanahan? Did you, did you ask the date when it's beginning? Days how many days it operates and how many students are in the program? Um, we have, we still have to recruit the students uh, for this year. Last year there were, I'd say, more or less 50 students at GAMS and approximately the same. I have to get that information exactly to what it was last year. Uh, and it begins in the middle of October. 
And they, and they go every day. I'm sorry? And the, and the students go every day after school? Um, I, it is not an everyday after school uh, program. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can give you the calendar, but it's not every day. So you'll get that information for us, Dr. Shanahan. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Tuchek? Yes. Uh, the second resolution is to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Houghton Mifflin Harcourt to purchase aerobics foundation web licenses on-site support session as professional development for staff and classroom <coughs> multimedia kits. And the funding source is IDEA Part B. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item C is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with TeachScape Incorporated to purchase electronic evaluation and teacher observation software licenses and electronic evaluation system consultant services. And the funding source is Strengthening Teacher and Leader Effectiveness Grant. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. Item D is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a consultant agreement with CASDA to guide the development of the school improvement department, review organizational capacity, and provide professional development in data-driven inquiry. And the funding source is Systemic Support for District and School Turnaround Grant. I have a motion. <coughs> Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? <coughs> Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item E is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Scholastic Incorporated to purchase reading and phonics intervention for students at Horizons on the Hudson. And the funding source is IDEA Part B. Can I have a motion? Second. <coughs> Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Axby? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Tuchek? Yes. Item F is a resolution to approve conference requests. Now we added the additions to this item, so please look in the packets that were handed out for all of the different conference requests. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. And item G is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a consultant agreement with Dr. Joan Miller to provide professional development to Vales Gate School teachers and teaching assistants focusing on students with disabilities at a cost not to exceed $3,000. The funding source is the general fund. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? <coughs> yes, Mrs. McAfee. I'm just curious as to why we're, we're doing something only in one school. If this is a value, why would we be doing it uh, across the district? Because in other schools that have similar classrooms. Dr. Shanahan? 
I'm sorry, I'll, I can respond to that. Okay. Please, please sure. um, this is specific to Dale's Gate School. These are two new classrooms that were created um, for uh, a population of students that uh, we have not had in that particular school at this point. Okay. And, and Gardner Town is different? They have a different program in Gardner Town than we do in Dale's Gate. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Patrick. And that concludes my items. Thank you, Dr. Shanahan. I just sorry. <laughs> roll call, please. Mr. Howard. I had questions and comments, and no roll call. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Brokaw. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. Dr. Shanahan, I just want to ask you to speak um, because the question about the Sherpa trip came up from one of the board members. So if you could just explain how it's coming to us at the board workshop, but the, you know the, the, it just got processed and yeah, why was, it's not a walk-in tonight because I had explained to the board that it was going to be a walk-in. Absolutely. Tonight. Yeah, there was a delay in uh, processing all the paperwork for it, um, but everything is... Uh, set to go, so we'll be presenting that at the workshop in October. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shanahan. Next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Finance. Thank you, Madam President. First item is a resolution to authorize the awarding of the 2012-2013 district transportation bids. I have a motion. Sure. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Walton? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Fuchek? Yes. <laughs> Item B is a resolution to authorize the awarding of 2012 2013 fall athletic transportation bids. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item C is a resolution to declare books and equipment surplus not to leave and to authorize the disposition. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item D is a resolution to accept the donation of furniture to the Newberry and Lawrence East School District. This is from uh, C.S. Arch. Can I have a motion? <laughs> Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item E is a resolution to approve the increase to the Newark Free Library 2012-2013 fund budget using funds donated by the Friends of the Newark Free Library. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? I don't have anybody that wants to give us any money to add to our general fund. <laughs> I'm not sure we have many friends. <laughs> yeah. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokosh. Yes. Mr. Woodall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. Item F is a resolution to approve Newberg Free Library RCLS answer agreement. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. <coughs> Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item G is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute the final 2011-12 contract with Dutchess Postings. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. 
Item H is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute the final 11-12 contract with Monroe to Orleans proceeds. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Kolkosh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchak? Yes. Item I is a resolution authorized the board president to execute the final 2011-12 contract with Rockland proceeds. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. 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 Item J is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute the final round of all contract with Southern Westchester proceeds. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item K is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute the final 11-12 contract with Holster Hoseys. Can I have a motion? No. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item L is a resolution to approve the booster clubs for the 2012-13 school year. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokosh. Um, I just have one uh, question. I noticed on here all the booster clubs that are listed have both boys and girls components, except for one, um, which has both boys and girls involved, well, and that's a basketball. Is there a girls um, <clears throat> booster, or is that take care of both? This 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 list is on, is only comprised of those that have submitted to be approved and accepted by the board. Is there a girls booster club for basketball? Uh, we would have to ask the athletic director if he knows if there's one. Okay. And then they would have to come back for approval Correct. before, before they, they started involved. any fundraising activities. Correct. So all the others, that's all both boys and girls. Well, whatever's listed. Okay, so we will um, we'll look into that and make sure that they're aware of the fact. It, certainly, for equity, we want to be sure that we're raising funds for both our boys and our girls teams, and um, get that paperwork submitted so that we can approve it so they can start their fundraising activities. Thank you, Ms. Prokosh. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item M is a resolution to authorize payment of property tax refunds pursuant to court orders. Mm -hmm. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item N is a resolution to accept the monthly bills and reports. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Madam President, I'd like to add agenda item O, resolution based on a court order. Can I have a motion to add item, a uh, resolution O to the agenda? Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Be it resolved that the board hereby authorizes a settlement and proceeding pending in Orange County Supreme Court 
as presented to the board and ratifies execution of the settlement agreement dated August 20th, 2012 by Mark Rushfield on behalf of the school district and directs Mr. Rushfield to file a stipulation of discontinuance of this action with the court. I have a motion. So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Luce? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pasella. Next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. On the Human Resources agenda, items A through M, we have on the professional side appointments, change of status, change of location, home teachers, return from leave of absence, leave of absence, and on the civil service side we have appointments, leave of absence, change of location, retirement, resignation, and a former employee who passed away. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchak? Yes. Resolution N, or professional change of status. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. I'm <coughs> No. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? No. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchak? Yes. Resolution O is to create additional positions. Uh, one math teacher, one reading teacher, one special education teacher, five teaching assistants, and eight teacher aides, and the funding source for each are listed. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kucha? Yes. Resolution P is to approve an additional 2012-13 fall athletic coach. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kucha? Yes. Resolution Q is to approve the 2012-2013 winter athletic coaching appointments. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Yes, yes. Mrs. McAfee. I would like to ask that item 6 be tabled to can I have a motion to table number six on resolution Q for further discussion in executive session? Second. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Mr. Kuchak? Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes, I'd like to table, uh, I'd like to table Q. The whole thing? Yes. Can I have a motion to table resolution Q? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Wichek? Yes. Resolution R is to approve the 2012-2013 Schedule J appointments. 
Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll. Yes, Ms. Prokosh. And possible, I'd like to um, number 72 for that Can I have a motion to table item number 72 on resolution R for discussion in executive session? Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Profosh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Any other questions or comments? The vote, uh, the vote, the motion is now for resolution R minus number 72 off of the resolution. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Yes. Resolution asks us to approve additional curriculum chair appointments. Can I have a motion? So Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution T is to approve Title I AIS support services appointments, funding sources Title I grant for AIS services for the non-public schools. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution U is to approve a teacher tenure recommendation. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. <clears throat> Resolution B is for your information only. It's upcoming tenure recommendation for a teacher. And Madam President, I'd like to ask to have item W added to the agenda. It's on the table. I have a motion to add Resolution W to the Human Resources Agenda. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution W is a professional appointment to appoint the media communications teacher at NFA Maine. This was a position that was created at the August 28th board meeting for Go Back TV. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mrs. Limer. Our next item on the agenda is from the clerk of the board. And the approval of the regular minutes of June 27, 2012, June 3rd, July 10th, July 13th, August 14th, a special meeting and a work. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is public discussion and comment on non-agenda items. I have several, oh, just one, I 
I have one name of someone who's um, turned in to speak on non-agenda items, and after that, we'll open up to anyone else that wants to speak on non-agenda items. First, we'll hear from Sherry Casey. Hi, good evening. Um, actually, I'm here on Sherry's behalf. My name is Carol Lopez. Um, I am a parent of three young students at Verizon's on Hudson. Um, I'm also a PTA member with Sherry. I am also a member on the Compact Committee. And I'm here to talk to you about something that is a great concern. First of all, from the parent perspective, but also as representing um, folks in the uh, above groups that I've mentioned. Um, as you are aware, the elementary schools have lost security guards that would normally be at the main entrance of the school. The setup of Horizon is such that if a parent or anybody were to wish to enter the building at the main front door, you must ring a bell. If that bell is rung, there is a, a, a button that someone would push in the main office to open this front door. The problem is, however, at present, without having a security guard, the button is in the main office, and if you've been in the building, you can't see who happens to be at the front door. It is under um, my understanding, as has been it shared with me from members in the main office, in the health office, which shares this main office space, that this bell is rung between 50 and 70 times a day. Um, secretaries are on the phone at the time that this occurs, in the middle of uh, meetings, and my concern, as well as other parents and staff members, is that you cannot see who you are letting into this building without walking away from your desk and going down a flight of stairs, which is not possible from a number of folks who have the ability to let the person in at the front door. Um, so to me, that is posing a security risk. Um, the um, security cameras that were installed to help with this process, which I understand were installed, I believe, last year, um, there is no monitor in the building. So they are proving to be non-functional because although they're erected on the building, without a monitor in the main office, it doesn't do any good. You still cannot see who is at the front door. I actually arrived this afternoon after school was out of session, rang the bell. Um, there was a teacher that happened to be walking by the stairs who could tell the secretary who I was or that it was a parent. We were let in, but then there's a second set of doors, which should open by pushing this bell. I thought it was an additional piece of security that was implemented. And unfortunately, the door is broken because over the summer when there was construction done on the building, it was never rewired correctly. So someone still had to come down the steps to be able to let me in. Um, our concern is that by losing our security guard, I don't know the structure of other buildings. I can't speak to that we have. But what I can say is the structure of our building does not allow for us to know who is at the front door and who is being let in. Because the availability of this person who would sit at the front door and monitor is not there. As a parent, of course, this is one of the first things that I was very concerned about. Um, what about the visitors who, when the bell is rung, they do come in, they're required to come to the main office to log in. Normally they would log in with the security guard, get their visitors packed, we'd know why they were there. If these individuals do not come up the steps and go to the main office as they are supposed to, so there again, we're using the honor system in the understanding that the individuals entering the building will follow protocol. What if they don't? Big concern to myself. I hope big concern to you as well. Um, of course, my first request would be for the return of our security guard. I understand you have budgets and there are things that need to be adjusted, cuts need to be made. I get that, I run my household. So I understand um, we, we need something and we need something immediately. We do not have the facility that is available for us to be able to maintain as far as I'm concerned, strict safety for the folks that are entering the building. 
Um, monitors, I know there have been requests for that to be looked at, a number of requests. We have been told it'll be taken care of. Uh, sure, I would love for tomorrow. If there were a big screen in the main office, we'd be able to see who was at the door. Um, I know the security guard had other roles. They helped in uh, bus arrival, with the students coming off the bus, um, <coughs> dismissal and parent pickup. The security guard was familiar with the rules and regulations of who was allowed to pick up a certain child based on whatever that child's information is. Um, so my question is, you know, now we don't have that. Um, also, whenever we have a school function, a school dance, a movie night, what have you, we were required to have a security guard. Is that now no longer an option for us? Do we no longer have a security personnel who would be able to uh, be present during those functions? Um, these are some of the questions that we have, and of course the remedy that we're looking for, um, A, number one, we would love to have our security guard back, B, um, we need the monitors, we need a monitor tomorrow, we need someone who can make sure that the security cameras are working in lieu of having a security guard and can then set those cameras up, I'm not techie, but so that the camera shoots the picture, the picture is shown somewhere, we don't have that. And so as a parent, as a member of PTA and Compacts Committee, um, I do ask that you think on this, and we would really like to have a resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lopez. Um, Mr. Velez and, and Mr. Jensen perhaps can speak to um, the monitor situation and the camera, um, and also maybe the fixing of the door. Madam President, we are working right now with the technology department and with the camera vendor. The, camera, the cameras are installed. We are hoping by next week those cameras can be viewed by the monitor in the computer at the main office. So when somebody rings the doorbell, whoever is sitting on the desk can see who's there and we're going to relocate the button to, to open the door. We're also doing that in all the elementary schools. I've been working with Mr. Pasella because since we lost the guards, we are going to do that at all the schools. We have a buzzer system at one school that is working. We tried it there. So we're going to work on do the other elementary schools. The door part, I didn't know I would look into that tomorrow. And certainly if it's something um, that is around the capital projects and the construction work that took place, we'll contact Mr. Damon on that to get that resolved. The cameras were put the, the, with the construction project. The wiring is in place. We have to relocate it to the main office. I am working on that with our electrician. Like I said, hopefully by the end of next week, we're going to have it installed. It will not be a new monitor. It can be seen by the computer screen in the main desk. Anything else will be directed to um, through the superintendent to his staff to address. <coughs> so thank you for your comments. Anyone else that would like to make a comment on non-agenda items, please step to the podium and give your name and address. My name is Robin Guzman. Um, I am also a parent at Horizons and um, on the PTA and Compact, and I would like to um, reverberate what Ms. Lopez described as a security concern of many um, parents. Um, many of us were able to come and many of us weren't, but um, as far as, I mean, it's required that we lock the doors, but if we're buzzing in, whoever happens to ring the bell, um, there's no point in having the doors locked. Um, so. We, we need the for whoever's opening the doors to be able to know who's coming in the building. Um, and also, again, you know, the, the location of the main office, it is on the honor system of where the person who's being let in then goes as soon as they get in the building. Um, and with custody and different things like that, with pickups, it is a concern of ours to not have, um, you know, a security guard and definitely not to have any, you know, eyes be able to decide who's coming in the building. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Guzman. Hi, uh, I'm Joe Lopez. Uh, I also have uh, three children at Horizons, and um, I just would like to um, say my, my extreme concern is uh, the safety of the children in the school. and. Um, I also work in a school, and we have someone at the front door. It doesn't uh, require a lot. We have uh, uh, a 
a parent who comes in and actually watches and mans the door, uh, checks people in, you know, shows them where to go. It's just one level of safety. It's a very uh, simple thing to do. I would like to suggest, I mean, we need to do something immediately. This should be at the top of your priority list to get this done. This should not be, well, we might have it done next week. This needs to get done. We're talking about children's safety here. We've all heard about the horror stories that happen in school buildings. These are elementary children in the downtown Newburgh, which we all know we need to be very careful around. Um, I think that this needs to take a much more higher priority than uh, what I hear being spoken of tonight. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. There is an honor system that the person will go over to the main office. 
there have been many, many times when parents have just washed straight up the steps and the secretary has to run around the column and sometimes catch them on the second floor if there was someone who wanted to come into the building to do harm for any reason, they would have better be on the second floor before anything could be done. I just want to say that. Say that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bourne. <laughs> Anyone else that would like to comment on non-agenda items? Being none. Be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purposes, to review the employment history of particular individuals and for the matters leading to the employment of particular individuals. The board may take action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? I'm sorry, Mr. Lawson? Yeah, I wanted to, um, I wanted to have a conversation around the, uh, the charter school. I don't know if it's appropriate now or is it appropriate in executive session, but I, I wanted to talk about the charter school. Okay. So, never mind. Sit back down. <coughs> you have to make a comment. You're gonna, go ahead. Are you going to make a comment, Mr. Lawson, yes. as a community member? As a board member, but not representing the whole board. No, not representing the whole board. Okay. My, my, my concern and my comment is around um, the, the page 60 of the uh, application that was submitted that indicated that the board was supportive of the uh, application for the, the charter school. Um, and my concern is that um, the support was, was given based on certain information that was relayed to us. And that information turned out to be not accurate. And so I think that something should be addressed to reflect that we made a recommendation based on certain and inaccurate information. My concern is also that um, we heard a lot about um, issues that are impacting all the kids in the district. And I don't think that you should pick one situation against the other and say, this one is, is broken and can't be fixed, and this one is the savior of all. And I, my concern is, is that we need to look at options. I, I, I thought one of the things that Mr. Eka said that was really telling was he, he said that if it's a great program and if it's going to impact the students and directly impact them in a, in a positive way, why not instillate that in uh, in our school district. Right. And so, um, and then yet another comment that was made by Mrs. Kearns indicated that she said that the, the charter school may, she didn't say it would definitely, but she said it, would, it may help the situation. Well, I don't think that we should be um, banking on a may. If, if it's going to help, it is going to help. If it's not going to help, then don't tie it like it's the savior of all. And the final comment is, the root word for education is educare, and it means a pulling out. And I haven't heard any commentary about what, because this, this, this population of students that, uh, that will be going to this charter school are the hardest population of students to work with. Mm -hmm. These are the most difficult kids right. to right. work with and to educate. So you need certain talent, you need certain understanding, you need certain Pro programmatic things that have been proven and evidence-based that I haven't seen talked about. I heard a lot about, and I heard, and, 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 and I have to say, to me, it's rhetoric because you, you don't pull on my heartstrings and say, you know, we're this is a bad situation, and and the kids need to, um, you know, this is a rough situation, and <laughs> drugs and, and, and jail. We we know that. What it, what's the solution to do that? I haven't heard anything about any kinds of studies or any kinds of other programs that was evaluated that dealt with this population of students. And my concern is, is when you deal from a deficit-based model, which is what I think the school is, what the charter school is, is doing, you never get to look at the, the greatness of our students and to, and to understand that you can pull stuff out of them. Again, the word educare means to pull out. That's education. 
to, to raise up and to, to pull that knowledge and information out of them. We have, that's what I would, that's what I want to hear. Because that's the only thing that's going to solve this problem. It's not public school education. It's not um, charter school. It's the process by which we're going to educate these kids. And so um, I started off by saying my concern was, and, and I actually voiced these things when we were talking about this, and I was sort of shushed down. And, and that's why I'm a little upset, because I was shushed down because I was, it was my understanding, well, you don't have to worry about it because it's not going to cost the district anything. Right. Well, it is going to cost the district anything, right. and I still don't know what the impact of the charter school is going to be. So that's my statement, and I just want I needed to get that out because I was sitting here just upset because I, did, I never heard anything about the success or the evidence-based information that would lend us or give, give the public some indication that, hey, this, is, this can really work here. What can really work here? Just because it's a charter school, by de facto, it's going to be a solution and a placebo to just everything? No. It, it, you have to engage these kids in a way that's going to pull the best out of them. And, and I didn't hear that. And, and to, to spend money without consideration to that, to me, is a waste of, a waste of time. So I was, I was compelled to say that. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak, Madam President. You're welcome, Mr. Watson. And I do just want to make a, Mr. Um, Pizzo wants to make a comment as well, but I do want to make the comment that you are correct at the time that that, um, you know, support was given, the board was under the impression that it was at no cost to the school district. So certainly that was information that we didn't gain until very recently and as Mr. Fitzgerald spoke very clearly he apologized he also was not aware of the process of the funding so um, so you are, are correct in that statement and um, you know I mean we were here they were making a presentation about what they were going to do I don't think any of us sat here and said anything about whether we agreed with it, didn't agree with it, or, you know, anything moving forward. And I appreciate your comments and your thoughts around, um, you know, what actually is going to happen at that program. I, I appreciate your thoughts also, but I, I just want to do a clarification of <clears throat> what, what Dawn has just said. In the beginning, we thought that they, because they were addressing and targeting students that had already left our system, that there would be no charge for students, there would be no charge for students to the Newburgh School District. Then as the thing progressed, we knew we were gonna have to pay what we pay for the private schools anyway, which is nursing, special ed, transportation. However, it then dawned on us after discussing with several different departments at State Ed, with Mr. Purcell and myself on the telephone, and uh, that we found out that we would not be reimbursed any money for the first year. Well, what, you know, what, let me, that, so up until today, we thought it was only the first year. However, we found out today, again, with another department at State Ed, that it's the first two years. And that's what you saw in the presentation here of the total cost as we know it today. It may change, but as we know it today, that's the total cost that Mike did in his PowerPoint. So even as the last minute today, Mr. Fitzgerald and he in his place was trying to find out more information today, and we and ours were uh, comparing notes with him, saying, do you know this, do you know that? And he was calling different departments that stayed at. It's a, it's a very confusing muddle, it's a quandary of who gets what when. But what we presented here in the PowerPoint, there's no way this district can support the charter school with the cost that it's gonna be to the taxpayers. And that's what we showed in the PowerPoint today. Mike, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I do. And I don't want to comment on good, bad, and different. You saw the money thing. They did bring up that it's only going to cost, uh, I think they said $4,800 per kid. It's, it's going to cost you $15,000 per kid for two years, and then it's going to cost you 5000 But just to clarify the process, tonight was a public hearing, Mr. Lawson. 
and then we are required to submit these comments to the Board of Regents at SED, because they're going to be the final judge. I mentioned it earlier that it's not up to you to decide whether this gets approved or not. It's up to the Board of Regents and SED. We are today regarding charter schools. We can make our own statement. We can be biased, which is completely different than the budget process. We have to be completely unbiased. We have no limitations of what we can say in regards to this, and uh, we can include comments from the Board of Ed and Administration. So that's the, that's the process. a program that is going to attract them to want them to come back to the district because remember they're disenfranchised for many different reasons and they have not had a successful or positive experience so you know then it's our obligation to find something that is going to attract them to come back into the system we really want to get those kids involved in the community should stand up and go out and, and get those kids try to talk these kids back into school and, and, and we're still going to have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we are. We are. You're correct. And I believe we can talk some to come back to school now. Oh, I don't want to disrupt it, but uh, maybe we need to get it. Yeah. Mrs. McAfee? I think I, I got so involved in what you said. But my question, I know, is involved around the idea that that we did write a letter of support mm -hmm. of, of Mr. Fitzgerald's proposal. Mm -hmm. Could we now reconsider that? Because for the proposal to go in mm -hmm. with our letter mm -hmm. might actually be misleading at this point because I think it's possible that enough of us would have changed mm -hmm. our, our thinking, not because we don't agree with the concept, mm -hmm. but because of the financial aspect. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. I think that that's mm -hmm. the thing. If I sort of understood part of what you were saying, it's the idea that, that you're going to spend the money on this group, mm -hmm. but you'll have to cut it from perhaps our babies, right. our kindergarten, our first graders, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we've only got so right. much money. We've got so much money, and, and we're under the tax cap. On our dropouts, then mm -hmm. we obviously cannot do other things which we have decided to be more important to our mm -hmm. children. So. So yes, in answer to your question, we can, so based on what Mr. Pasella just told us, send in other comments saying that based upon the new information that's been received, we cannot support this. Madam President, yes, in, in, light of, in light of this, um, I think what has come to the table is that we do have a segment of the population that we do need to deal with. And we need to come up with an alternative source of education to deal with these children. Right. It's easy for us to say now it's something that we don't want to do because it's going to cost us. <laughs> and it's still even a segment of the population out there that's not being dealt with. They need to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. We need to come up with some type of alternative source of education that's going to deal with these kids because they're talking about 105 now, which next year will be 205. I mean, we are losing kids that aren't being dealt with properly. We can't leave them on the side. This is brought up an opportunity, this, this is the spirit of the dialogue here with regards to a population that basically has been neglected. And we need to deal with it. I agree with you, Mr. Howard, but let me correct something that you said. To say that we're not dealing with it because of the cost, 
I don't think is accurate. The district has been trying to deal with it, and Mr. Lewis will be happy to speak to you for more than 22 years that he's been sitting on the board, and they've tried different things. We have not come up with anything at this point, and it wasn't abandoned due to cost. It was abandoned because it wasn't working. So we're not trying to abdicate our responsibility for a population of kids that we need to meet their needs that to this point we haven't been able to. We are certainly willing to do that. And as a matter of fact, I was not able to be there, but the Alternative Education Committee did meet this week. So we are addressing it as a board, and we are looking to move forward, and we're not holding back due to cost. We're holding back because we need to find a program that is going to reach these kids. And, and that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. We need to find that program. If it's out there, let us find it. Let's look outside the box. Let's, 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 let us look outside the box, because there's other municipal uh, school districts that are similar to our makeup, that does deal with these popular, these situations. So, I mean, the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again, expect a different result. We've got to think outside the box. Mrs. McAfee. Yeah, we also have to realize, uh, Tom, that when we had the alternative meeting and we had these other alternatives meetings over yes. the years, we were talking about kids who were still in the system. Correct. Not students who had chosen to leave the system. Uh, so that, that's a consideration too. And that was why there was such a strong theme, I thought, about people being involved in, in helping kids, you know, get back in yeah. you know, to yeah. school. Um, the, we can't necessarily make kids come to school. So the, the children that we were really talking about tonight, true, they, they are disenfranchised, but they, they have made a decision that they, they were going to go outside of our parameters. Yeah, the school system, and the community needs to understand this, whether it's right or wrong. Yeah, the school system cannot help all social ills. And that, that's just not an excuse, it, it, it's, it's a fact. Yeah. So we need to address their needs if we can. But it's going to take a lot of community support to do it. Absolutely. Anybody has ever been done right inside the school. But we're going Charter to have Mr. Lawson. I, I, Mr. Howard makes an excellent point. But I, I guess where, where I'm going with this is we need to also help the students that are struggling in our, in our school district. Um, while we help the students that are disenfranchised. Um, and I think we are taking steps. And I mean, I, I'm looking at a PowerPoint that was conducted by the um, the Metropolitan Center for Urban Education that yeah. came and spoke to our district and was sharing ideas and concepts and ways that we can engage these students. Because again, listen, this, this the population that he wants to track, that, that the, the charter school wants to address, trust me when I tell you that population is not easy to crack. It's, there's, there's, you talk about social situations. You, you, they, they, we, we talked about people who were uh, I think Mrs. Kearns, the great, the, the sadness that she felt when the, when the child that was 17 years old couldn't read, mm -hmm. and, and the frustration that he had because he failed. So, so again, you got to listen real closely. Mrs. Kearns said, when, uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't Mrs. Kearns, it was one of the other speakers that said, if a child doesn't learn how to read by the third grade, it, the second grade is it, 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 basically, so, so now we're not focusing on that group. We're focusing on another group. But, but as a district, and I'm listening, let's listen to the whole conversation. So what are we doing about focusing on the kids in the second and the third grade to make right. sure that that reoccurring problem doesn't happen? That's right. So, 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 so it is, it is an issue that we have to look at globally. But, but when you say that I'm going to take from this, 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 limited pool of funds in a stressed school district and I'm going to give it to this area and you don't have any plans to really deal with this tremendously difficult because I haven't heard any plans. I haven't heard 
him examining the urban prep in Chicago. I haven't heard any conversations about the Eagle Academy out of the New York City who deals with this population on a regular basis and has success. I haven't, I haven't seen that. And so when, 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 and again, I'm going back to the point where we, we said yes to this and I was raising all of these questions and I was, and it was said, and no, it, was, it wasn't suggested and we didn't think it was told to us that we were not going to be charged for these students. That's what was said to us and we accepted that. And I accepted that and I swallowed and now I'm kicking myself because I should have stuck to my guns and said, listen, this, I want to hear, because I started asking questions. How are you going to engage these kids' parents? Right. How are you going, because all of those things that we heard, what is the strategy? Right. It's not just charter school, it has to be a strategy right. to say this is what we're going to do to make it a positive, impactful um, inroad to, to dealing with these kids. And I didn't hear any of that, I just heard the same rhetoric. And, and, and so what, really why I'm frustrated is because you're asking the already strapped school district to take its resources and put it someplace where you don't even have a plan right. to really to really impact the, that group, that tremendously difficult group to educate. Right. And, and then I heard, you know, as, as part of the conversation, well, we won't be able to do everybody. Well, right. so, we can't do everybody. So, so, so what, are we, what are we saying to that group? Though? Are we saying? What we're saying? What we're saying? Are we saying to that group that we can't educate you? There's nothing we can do for you. So you just there's nothing in what there's nothing in what I said that indicated that. There's nothing what I said that indicated that. What I'm saying is, what we're saying to these like anybody else. They do, but with, but 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 the, the charter school is not the answer. Right. Unless you show unless you show me statistics, unless you show me evidence-based strategies, unless you show me solutions that have worked in the past with these types of these types of schools, then I don't. You can't just come up and show up and say charter school is the answer. So why don't we come up with a strategy? Yeah. Well, I, why can't why we stand that's, what that's, what we're, that's what we're doing. We were doing this with the NYU. With the NYU. You got to come in with it. With the NYU, with the NYU um, is my understanding. Yeah. Tell me if I'm wrong. With the NYU situation, they're, they're here to explain to us uh, and give us expertise right. and information about how we can effectively deal with um, educating kids in this urban setting with all the social issues, yes. with all of the other issues that are played yeah. in that. Yes. And so if, so yeah. we, we've taken steps. But that's yes. going to take time. What about these kids? So the charter school is going to take time. I'm talking about us sitting right at this table that I've been fighting for years for us to do something for these kids. These kids that we got suspended from school, that's out of school, did two hours study, and they're already four grades behind. Now, will they ever catch up? No, they will wind up like these kids. Kicked up, or pushed out, or dropped out. I understand what you're saying. Now, that's what we have. <laughs> and we gotta do something. All the kids. And I'm totally in favor of the alternative program. We got to. Because we need to do something with the town, though. But the, the, the best thing, if, if we've got so much money and we've got it in the, you know, our, our hands because it's not going to be a lot of money, and the best thing that we could do with it would be put it on our babies. Right. Make sure that we teach right. our children how to read. Right. So that they don't have those problems. Right. right. Some of our suggestions about alternative education did cost us a penny. If we, had, if we go ahead and start doing some of what we put on the table yesterday, mm -hmm. last month, last year, but Nothing. We're creating more kids to be pushed out, kicked out, dropped out. That's because we sit around and talk Absolutely. About right. And and don't, and don't get done. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't want to throw anybody under the table. No. But we ought to step up to the plate. But I think that we decided that at the end of the meeting, Don, you put going to be there. Yeah, we really made the decision that we were going to to put this into place very quickly. The work on now. Right? The scale yeah. back. Yeah. My yeah. God. Yes. Yes. Scale back. That happened right away. That's correct. You scale back. Yes. I'd like to make some comments uh, to Mr. Lawson about <laughs> some of the comments that you made. Uh, when Mr. Fitzgerald originally came, 
He came with a plan that he was going to address 16-year-old dropouts and older. Uh, he based his plan of his charter school on two schools, one in Brooklyn right. and one in the South Bronx. That's right. That had, that had a success run because they selected students from, from this group and they interviewed them before they got into the program and they were very closely checked to see how many credits they already had when they dropped out. Now these two schools that he, that he mentioned uh, have been in, in existence for quite some time and they, they've had a track record of success. With students, if they had 10, 11, 12 credits, they were the ones that seemed to make it through the program. They could see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. And in, and in that 100-page and in that page document, he has some uh, strategies for addressing the community and involving the parents. So I just wanted to, to, to tell you that, because that's the way he presented the program originally, when he said that we were not going to be charged for these kids because they were already out and gone. But that's not what State Ed told us. And, and even today, as I said before, we found out that we were going to be in the whole two years before we got any reimbursement whatsoever. And the reimbursement was not 14000 per kid, but it was more like uh, 9000 because the 5000 that we pay on each of our kids out of the local taxes is not included what State Ed gives to us. So I'm just trying to tie a few things together here. I don't know how many people remembered that from the first uh, presentation that was given to us. I, I, I appreciate um, your comments. I don't know if you, if you remember me in that conversation. I was asking a lot of probing questions, right? Yes. And, and the reason why I was asking those, those questions is because of the same things that I'm stating now. The fact that you, now listen to what you said. He said that he's going to, he's going to work with those kids who had a certain amount of credits. They, they would be the target group. Right, yeah. right. And that's gonna be the group. Because quite frankly, because again, this population is the most difficult to work with. So of course I'm not gonna work with those kids because those kids I can't educate. So that's, what, so, so we, we, gotta under, we gotta read behind the lines. So when I tell you, that I'm going to, so it's not those kids. It's not those kids. We're talking about kids that, you know, basically for one reason or another, slipped off the track, but they can really get easily back on. If you really want, see, I'm talking about, I, but that's what I'm talking about, but that's not what he was talking about. Right. And so I just, I just want to be real right. clear. That's, so, a, that's yeah, the target group that about. this charter school has. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's not my group. No, 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 no I'm saying, yeah. right. I say, I say, he, I miss, miss the first job. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's trying to, what you say, he's trying to guarantee success by working with, working with a certain segment of it. Which is, tip, which is typically what a charter school does. And they have very um, select criteria that sets them up for success. Right, and so, so, when he, so again, when we were asking all of these questions, and then it was sent back to us, oh, don't worry, basically don't worry about it, because it doesn't cost us anything. Right. Okay, yeah, this is great, go out and try it. Because right. it doesn't cost us anything. But now that we have all the information, right. all that other stuff doesn't matter. matter. Correct. Correct. So now we have that information and now we have a recourse as individuals and as a board to submit a comment how we feel in regards to that ch charter school. And we will do that. And as Mr. Pacello pointed out, Sue and I were there. This is not the decision of this board to uh, franchise the charter school. That's the state ed's job. We just held the public uh, hearing here today. Period. Yes, Mrs. McAfee. But if they decide that they're going to, as you say, franchise the school, we still have to pay part of it. Yes, we that's do. That's correct. And that's why Which is why we have to put in our comments at this point. I have to show that what it's going to cost us, as we showed on, on, the, on the PowerPoint. I mean, that was laid out quite, quite clearly, I think. Otherwise, people are going to say to us two years down the line, well, wait a minute, you didn't have anything to say. You know, when you had a chance, right. 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 you let the money be spent. Right. Right. Yeah. 
Correct. So now we have our opportunity, we know what that opportunity is, and we can prepare a written statement um, to go to the State Education Department. Okay? All right. Be it resolved that the Board hereby recess into executive sessions for the following purposes. To review the employment history of particular individuals and for matters leading to the employment of particular individuals. The Board may take action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? So moved. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Walters? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lillard? Yes. Mr. Maxby? Yes. Mr. Lillard? Yes. Mr. Lillard? Yes. Mr. Lillard? Yes. Thank you all for being here this evening. We need to remove from the table resolution 092712Q. I have a motion to remove resolution Q from the table. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Pocock? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Kuchek? Yes. And resolution Q is to make the winter athletic coaching appointments for the 2012-13 year. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Suchek? Yes. I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank you.